Hello, welcome to Centennial Hall, room 2310. I'm going to give you a rundown on how the technology works in this room. Up here at the teacher station, we have our touch panel. Right now, we're on the startup screen. There's a button there that says press here to begin. When I press that, it gives me the option of projector modes. Do I want to use just the left or just the right projector? Both projectors or neither. For this video, we'll go ahead and power up both projectors. It's going to turn on the projectors in the room and bring the screens down out of the ceiling. And that process, along with booting up all the equipment, takes just over a minute. While that's happening, we get the please wait while the system starts up screen. When that changes, we'll know that we're ready to go. While we're waiting for that, on the right-hand side of our touch panel, we have our five lighting presets. Lights all on, two whiteboard, or two lecture modes with the whiteboard and without the whiteboard lights a theater mode that will dim the lights, and then a lights all off selection. Those same five presets correspond with these five buttons on the controller on the wall, so you can use that if you'd like to. And then both doors have a master on-off switch right as you come into the room. Another feature that we have here in the room is a wireless microphone to reinforce your voice throughout the room. The wireless microphone has a switch at the top. If I go ahead and switch that on, the wireless microphone will come to life and then my voice is going to be reinforced throughout the room. Now if my voice is too loud or too soft, I can adjust the level of this wireless microphone. If I come over to the touch panel here, and you'll see now that we're on our main screen, we can begin to do things with the touch panel. There's an audio control button here on the bottom right. When I press that, I get a bunch of options and the wireless microphone level is on the left hand side. I can turn it up, turn it down, or mute it. And when I get it to the level that I want to use, I go ahead and hit the back button to get back to my main screen. And then I want to just give you a quick reminder to go ahead and flip that switch off when you're not using the wireless microphone. Because even if you're not using it, if it's left on, the batteries will completely drain. So now we can talk about the main screen here on our touch panel. The first thing we'll notice is that in the very top we have two tabs, a left projector tab and a right projector tab. Right now the left projector tab is highlighted, meaning whatever we do on our source select row is what's going to be shown on the left projector. If we wanted to switch something on the right projector, we would have to hit the right projector tab and then change that source as well. So right now we have PC on the right projector and PC on the left projector. So if we turn and look at the front of the room, both screens for us are both going to be showing the PC. A quick note about the PC is that you will have to log on to the PC when you come into the room. The username is going to be the first part of your UWL email address. So that's your username. And then the password is your UWL net ID. So that's how we'll log on to the computer. And then make sure you log off when you're all done using the room. The next couple of things on our source select row here are our laptop options. We have a VGA laptop and we have a digital laptop or an HDMI connection. All those cables are located in the cable cubby here. There's even a power supply down there so you can plug in. You don't have to rely on your battery. For demonstration purposes, I'll go ahead and take the VGA cable out and I'm going to plug that into my laptop. Then I'll take the audio cable and I'll plug that into the headphone jack on my laptop. And then I'm all set and I can come over to my touch panel and I'm going to hit the laptop button. Now because I'm on the left projector tab and I hit the laptop, my laptop is going to show up on the left hand screen and the PC will stay on the right hand screen. Okay, if your laptop doesn't show up right away, it's probably because you're not in the correct mode. You're going to want to change that in your control panel or on a Windows machine, you'll hold down the function key and you'll hit F8 and that'll give you a nice little menu or it'll scroll through these different options automatically. You'll want to choose duplicate mode so that whatever you're showing on your touch or on your laptop is going to show up on the screen as well. The next button in our source select row is our Blu-ray button. When I press the Blu-ray button, it brings up the controls for the Blu-ray. On the left hand side there we have our play and our stop. On the right hand side we have our navigation controls and our menu buttons. There's a full screen video button and when I press that I can preview what I'm doing on the Blu-ray and then I can hit back to get back to my main screen. The Blu-ray is located down underneath the document camera on the right hand side here. You can use the front panel controls if you need to as well, and you can play regular DVDs and CDs in there. Uh, you don't have to have a Blu-ray disc to use the Blu-ray player. This is also a good time to mention the volume. The volume can be controlled by the volume knob right here at the bottom of the touch panel. Turn it left and right to turn it up and down. And a quick note in that 
our Blu-ray is selected on the left projector, and our right projector still has PC on it, but the only audio we're going to hear is the audio from the Blu-ray player, and the reason for that is it's only going to give the audio source of whatever the most recent button press was on the touch panel. So if you have two different sources showing on the different screens, the source that's going to show up on the audio is the one that you hit most recently. The document cameras, the next thing on our list here, I'm going to go ahead and come over to the right-hand side of the teacher station. The power button is in the back of the document camera. When I power it on, that light blinks green for a few seconds. When it becomes a solid green, we'll know the document camera is ready. Our advanced controls are up here by the camera. Zoom in and out using the zoom wheel. A manual focus and an autofocus. You'll want to leave that on autofocus unless you're uh, doing something very active underneath and you have a manual focus so that it, it's not going in and out on you all the time. When the document camera is ready, I hit the document camera button on the uh, touch panel and then the document camera is going to show up on the left projector. So now once again we have left projector, I have the document camera, so anything I do on there is going to show up and the right projector still has the PC because we haven't touched the right projector tab to change what's on the right projector. The last uh, thing on the source select that we'll talk about is the auxiliary button. When I hit the auxiliary button it gives me a little sub menu that asks us if I want to use S-Video or composite video and all those connections are back here in our cable cubby again. They share the audio so the audio is going to be used no matter which one you choose. This is the composite video and this is the S-Video connection. And what those would be used for is if you had like a video camera that you wanted to come in and hook up or you had your iPod or something that you wanted to play, you could plug into those, uh, select the right option, and you'd be able to show it in front of the class there. On the left-hand side of our touch panel, we have a couple of nice little features. We have the left projector mute and unmute and the right projector mute and unmute. And the left projector mute, what's going to happen when I hit that button is not only is the projector going to mute the video or send a black screen up there without powering down, but it's also going to raise the screen. So now the projector in our system hasn't powered down, but now we don't have any video coming up here, and the screen has been removed, so I can go ahead and use the whiteboard. I have the PC up on the right-hand side, and I'm writing on the whiteboard, and I can do whatever I need to do until I'm ready to go back to my normal mode. Then I can hit the left projector, unmute, the screen's going to come back down, and now our document camera is back up there again, and we're back into the normal mode. The right projector mute and unmute is obviously going to do the same thing. It's just going to be for the screen on the right-hand side. The last button here on our list is the help button. It's an important button because when I hit help, it brings up the names and phone numbers of a couple members of our academic technology staff. If you ever need help during a class, these are the numbers that you would call to get somebody to assist you as soon as possible. This is also the, a good place to look for the numbers if you ever needed help with anything else pertaining to the classroom technology. I'm going to hit OK. That's going to get me back to my main screen. On the bottom right hand corner there is a button labeled System Off. When I hit System Off, it's going to ask me if I'm sure I want to power down. When I click that Power Down button, it's going to power down both the projectors, which is important, so we save the life of the projector bulbs, and it's going to bring the screens back up into the ceiling. Once again, if you ever have any questions or concerns, please give a call to the Academic Technology Services staff, and we'd be more than happy to help. Thank you.